exciting to be here. Good to meet everyone. I'm sure I'll get a chance to have some one-on-one -on -one interaction with you guys as we get closer into spring and even into the fall. But uh, real quick, excited to be here. It's been a uh, uh, Fun couple months uh, through the transition. Got out here a couple days. Watched, had opportunity to watch some uh, bull prep. Uh, went home for the holidays and then got right back out here. But uh, fully involved with recruiting and and now with player development and trying to get ready for you know kind of a, an OTA pre-spring ramp up here. Um, anytime you have a, a new staff, uh, there's there's new terminology, there's new things for our players and trying to get them comfortable uh, with, with the new vernacular, comfortable with the new coaches, so that way when we do get on the grass this spring, uh, we feel like we can continue to improve the product that's been out there. But uh, I'll open it up for questions. Matt, Ryan from sports.com, you made a pretty bold career move. Uh, at what point did you realize that you may have to take a step back and roll to maybe reach your broader goals in college football? Well, you know, it was a, it was a you. College football has become unique. Uh, the landscape has changed dramatically uh, in the last five years. Uh, there are opportunities uh, you know, to continue to, to further my career as a head coach, but you know, at the same time, you got to understand the power of the logo uh, here at USC. Uh, to me, this is one of the three or four blue blood programs where, when this when this program is operating at, at, at maximum capacity, it's good for college football. Uh, it's good for it, it's good for all things, and so uh, to be able to be attached to Coach Riley, to the staff, uh, to the vision of of what Coach Lynn was trying to put together, uh, kind of you know made me sit back and, and rethink a little bit about what my career goals were. Uh, would I like to be a, a head football coach at some point again? Sure, but um, I enjoy the camaraderie, the cohesiveness, the development that goes on in a in a position room, and so I'm looking forward to you know kind of getting back to grassroots too. How surprised were people when you <laughs> people around you? Probably, I don't think this was the job people thought I would leave for. Uh, there were some other ones out there that I think people tried to, you know, connect the dots a little bit. Uh, Coach Riley and I had never really uh, had a lot of formal interaction. Uh, we had a lot of mutual friends, and that's where this connection kind of took place. Well, through more of the, the mutual friends, uh, him knowing somebody that I was good friends with and vice versa. Um, really, like I said, was not on my radar when this opened up. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough that, that Coach Riley reached out to me and uh, we, we started that conversation piece as we were kind of wrapping up our season or, or deep into the playoff run. Yeah, did you already, already decided that you were going to make a move at this time? You just didn't know what it was going to be? Or, say that one more time. Did you already decide you were going to make a move? Uh, no, I don't. You, you always, it, it's always great to be wanted. Uh, I think uh, there was a couple opportunities out there that I was definitely going to look into. And, uh, you know, the USC one kind of threw a curveball at me. Uh, was not prepared for you know Trojan football to reach out to me. Scott Schrader with Lamont three and we are SC. What what gave you the confidence that, that this was the, the right place? Well, I think it, it starts with just some initial conversations with with Coach Riley, uh, realizing that there there are great people in place right now. There's great support. There's great energy. Uh, the resources are all right here uh, for this to be. Uh, the program that everyone wants it to be, live up to the caliber, live up to the standard uh, that, that people want SC football to look like. Uh, so that was the first thing. Knew that I was going to a place where you had the tools to, to, to be successful and to do it quickly. I think in this environment, this landscape of college football, there's been there's never been a time when you can't flip a roster or, or flip a mentality of a team quicker than you can these days right now. And then um, with Coach Lynn, had, had known about him, again, mutual friends. Uh, he worked with Gus Bradley. Gus Bradley is an NDSU alum. Uh, there were some connections there a little bit. So all of a sudden, to, to have an opportunity to work with what I thought was you know, someone that was on the cutting edge of, of maybe the, the next best coordinators out there, uh, why wouldn't you want to attach yourself with one, with quality people, but also very intelligent people that, that understand the right way to do things? Matt, uh, Luke Evans, Orange County Register, nice to meet you. Um, do, do you feel like in, in some way you're, you're both kind of, you know, betting on USC, but, but, but betting on yourself and just, you know, leaving North Dakota State and taking this job? And oh, I, 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 should, I think there's always that angle. Um, 
probably with every job you take, uh, there's a little bit of betting on yourself. I've, I've had seven, eight different jobs in my career, and they've all been great jobs for me. And all of them have allowed me to get to the, the next opportunity or create more opportunities for me. And, um, so. Sure, you can say I'm, I'm betting on myself a little bit, but I'm also betting on the, vi the bigger vision of, of what Coach Riley has going on here. Matt, Tony Morales from Athletic. What was that initial interview process like with, with Danny? And what, what did you learn throughout that time? Well, it was, it was initially just kind of getting to know one another. Uh, our past history, maybe connecting some dots of how we were connected through other people, talking a little bit schematically, um, philosophically, defensively, kind of how I had operated in previous, how he, what his vision was moving forward with SC defense. Um, we a little bit of X and O, a little bit of recruiting conversation, but um, which was was positive. I, I was very impressed uh, uh, with, with Coach Lynn, uh, his approach, his knowledge. I, I've the last you know couple two three weeks we've been able once the recruiting is, is kind of finalized for the class of, of 24 uh, we've been able to, to meet more defensively as a staff and still very very impressed with and, and you look at his product of work or that he had a year ago at UCLA tremendous job coming in and then revamping and really turning that around and uh, excited to be part of, of, of what he's going to do here and hopefully I can offer some assistance as we move forward. How does this philosophy mesh with what you did Similar, um, you know, operating from kind of a four-two-five structure, uh, multiple coverages. Going to play man, going to play zone, going to play some matchup, you know, coverage, and then multiple front movement, uh, and then necessary pressure. So to me, it was kind of a no-brainer. It felt like uh, very similar to what we were doing. Uh, I thought the learning curve would be short and. He's done a great job of explaining it, so it has been. And now it's my job to, to make sure that we can execute it on the grass. A, a lot of retention, obviously, in this linebacker room that, that you're inheriting, and just in general, kind of some struggles with run defense last year. Yep. And in terms of how you, you know, how, how you want to fit into Dan's, you know, kind of kind of vision and, and those schematics aligning. Just what do you want to instill as far as kind of those run principles and, and improving on that? Sure. Well, you know, I think the first thing any any time in my philosophy in college football is you have to be great against the run. Um, if, if you give up a ton of yards on the run game, you're going to defensively die a slow death out there. Um, so we need to be fundamentally sound, uh, structurally sound in what we're doing, um, have enough answers defensively with trade shift motion. Uh, we're going to see the gamut uh, as we enter the Big Ten, of uh, people trying to create leverage with with some sort of trade or shift or, or combination of both pre-snap. But uh, then the other thing is, is we, we have to be sound tacklers. We have to understand our own leverage drills, who's the force player, who's secondary force, who's the inside out piece, so we can eliminate explosive plays. It looked like there was a lot of opportunities last year where initial contact was made and then all of a sudden the ball would continue to travel downfield on explosive play and missed tackle. And so those are some things that we personally can get cleaned up, you know, especially at the second level. Hey, Coach Connor Morris at uscfootball.com. Have you had much time to talk with and spend a lot of time with the linebackers who are, who are returning so far? And just what have your impressions been? Not, not enough. Uh, and, and trying to you know, multiple irons in the fire right now, but that's why this time of the year is exciting because there, there will be some forced communication between those linebackers and myself. Um, have had some and, and tried to dive into more what their level of, of knowledge is, you know, what their concerns were a year ago, um, you know, how can we make this a better defense for them? Uh, you're only as good as, as, as your players. Uh, doesn't it doesn't matter what I know or what Coach Lynn knows. It's what they can what they can understand and then regurgitate on the, on the field that, that's going to matter. And so just trying to get a baseline for, for what their football IQ looks like right now. And so I'm excited, uh, you know, Eric Gentry, um, you know, is, is a young man who has a ton of potential. We need to find a way to continue to, to keep his weight up right now. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, that has struggled, you know. I, th I think if he can consist consistently, you know, be 220, uh, he's a guy that, that I think from a durability standpoint, from a tackling standpoint, uh, will have a, have a lot more success. And then, you know, we have some other returners as well that uh, we just needed get their feet in the ground, give them the tools that they need to be to be consistent. 
uh, and I think you'll see a better product. What are some traits that the guys you're adding to your linebacker must possess? The, the new players that we're adding? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, with, with, with Easton, you know, just some veteran, a young man, transfer from Oregon State, a young man that's played a lot. Um, so has that game experience that, that uh, has seen adjustments, has understood defense, uh, excited and excited for kind of where he's taken off this this offseason. But, you know, the three new linebackers uh, that we've signed, he's, you know, all of them, you've seen a tremendous length, uh, bigger version, uh, 6'2", 6'3", uh, rangy, uh, can, can play sideline to sideline. I think as we start to kind of put pieces together, I think you'll, you know, how they re, how they respond in the weight room, how they respond to the dining center will determine if they're a micro or a will. But all of them, multi-sport athletes, basketball players, baseball players, football players, of course, track athletes, um, trying to optimize the athleticism that we can have, but they still have to have the necessary skill sets to be effective Big Ten linebackers. With recruits, like high school recruits, what are some of the traits that, that those guys need to have for you? For you to be? Well, you know, you, do the skills looking for tremendous speed? You know, speed is one of those things that at every position. Uh, I've never, I've never met a coach who said someone was too fast for him. And so, always looking to, to optimize speed, uh, change direction, short, short area quickness, uh, play strength. Can they play off of blocks? You know, can they come through their hips on tackling? You know, I'm giving you kind of a list of things that, as I'm watching film, probably go through my mind uh, as, as I'm watching it. And then when you get them on campus, that's sometimes the, the most intriguing is being able to sit them down and say, okay, teach me your number one coverage that you guys play at high school X, Y, and Z, and start trying to pull back some layers of really you know, how sharp, what, what football type IQ, and what growth potential do they have? You know, one of the things I like to do is have them on campus and then they'll be back the next time, and I'll start asking them about the things that we talked about. What kind of retention do they have? You know, what, what, kind, of, what kind of, how do they learn? Uh, is it visual? Do I need to have video? Because that, that's my job, is to make sure that I find the right teaching method for each individual athlete. Coach Keeley, you're with uh, you. Obviously, you're a head coach for the past few years, so I've come in and be an assistant. So, is it dynamic a little bit? You're kind of not being the guy that's being anymore and kind of having to step back and let Lincoln and Dan do a lot of the. No, it, it, it seems seamless. You know, you might have to ask Coach Riley. Um, I, I try not to be the guy with too many ideas. Um, just trying to make sure that I'm learning what's going on right now and how we do things. But, uh, you know, I, I'm here to offer support. I'm here to offer any suggestions. If if we are looking to do something different or we, we, we need uh, some variety, um, I do think I have, you know, some knowledge there, uh, both having been a coordinator and been having been a head coach before. But, uh, no, it's been good so far. I, I'm excited. I, I, I really like the dynamic of the, of the staff here. Coach Keely, you're with USC Athletics. You've led and been a part of multiple championship winning teams. Is there a common denominator with championship culture that you've identified? Well, I, I think one of the things is, you know, and, and, and this probably was part of the hiring process was, you know, at North Dakota State, the logo on the jersey was the most important thing. And I know that's, that's a little bit of an outdated mentality, but uh, I think when you start looking maybe at the Kansas City Chiefs, Michigan Wolverines, North Dakota State, that's probably one of the things that a lot of them have in common is the servant leadership amongst the team and making the program, making the, the logo the most important thing. And so I think as we continue to recruit, um, you always got to find the right players, the right fit. But that's one of the things that uh, I know our defensive staff is starting to be more diligent about is finding the right people. You know, is it about winning football or is it about yourself? Uh, hopefully it's about executing and playing winning football. And all, every young man that comes through our doors has aspirations of going to the NFL. And, and, and my number one response is, well, then win games. Because at the NFL, they want to they draft winners. You know, we want to recruit winners. It's seldom do we go to a high school where the young man's 1-11 and, and recruit someone. You go, you go to modern day, you go to the schools that are winning games to recruit. And so let's come here and put the best product on the field. And let's do it for the logo rather than individual praise. I'm a, I'm a process-oriented person. Um, it's about 
how you do things. It's about your preparation daily. That leads to success on Saturday. Um, it's not chasing, you know, number of yards or, or, or less. It's how can we put ourselves in the best situation to be successful? Coach, as much as you can, can you describe the conversations you've had with Lincoln Riley about the vision for the defense and yep. how you can get there, like the best case scenario and what that will take to get there? Well, I think it, it, it just starts with the little thing, instilling the little things, and then following through with the with the standard. Um, one thing you're going to find out is, is I'm I'm not a big expectation person. I don't, I don't like the word um, because your expectation for USC football is completely different than mine. So when people use expectation, that's fictional a little bit. I like the standard. What is the standard? This is a championship caliber program, or or, or has the vision to be one. Well, then we need to start holding our kids to championship habits on the practice field, in the classroom, in the dining center, in the football facility, you know, in, out socially here as well. And I think that's one of the things that um, coaches has has kind of given everyone offensively and defensively the opportunity to do. You, you are what you tolerate. And so if you have a lot of kids that are late, you have a lot of kids that, that, that miss things, well, guess what? You're going to miss that third third short. You're not going to get that stop. You're not going to you're not going to get the conversion on fourth down because you, you are what you tolerate. And so we need to continue to hold our kids accountable to to what USC football standard is. Going back to recruiting, what's the challenge for you? You're now recruiting areas you probably weren't before where you maybe not one of the connections established, yep. recruiting different kids. How hard is it to kind of build your foundation? Well, you know, part of it <laughs> – this year, I, I did get into the Midwest a little bit. With us moving into the Big Ten, uh, we, we've expanded our recruiting into Big Ten territory. So I was throughout kind of middle America. Uh, and, and we did sign three kids from traditionally Big Ten country. And so I think the brand itself, so, you know, kids know who USC is. Having been a head football coach, having been at North Dakota State, you know, a school that has had some success, um, you know, our footprint was, was was relatively big throughout the Midwest, so I feel comfortable going back to the Midwest. Of course, getting into Texas, getting uh, getting into California, just introducing myself, being honest, being upfront, being transparent with high school coaches. Uh, I think doing it the right way. Uh, no, same same standard of our players. Do it the right way here. Well, I got to do it the right way when I recruit as well, and, and and trying to create those those strong relationships, get kids on campus, get coaches on campus. Uh, you know, I think if you do it the right way, people tend to want to gravitate towards you. They, they, hey, I'd, I'd love to see my, my, my player play for you. We'd love to get back to campus. Duke Nino Wynn with the LA Times. You were talking about meeting with the linebackers and asking, you know, how can we make this defense better for you guys? Like, did you think of an answer yet? It's obviously very early. Well, I, but I, think, I think there were some things that, you know, just – functionally how we operate. I think we can we can clean some things up a little bit. Um, you know, again, the more you put on them and the more they have to think pre-snap and post-snap, the slower they're going to be. Um, you know, anytime there's they're not clarity, legs get slow, reaction time decreases, and the last thing you want to have defensively is a bunch of processing individuals playing defense and if we can become reactive uh, and so that means maybe we have to have fewer checks fewer adjustments we need to have a call or two where we can play through and uh, we can get lined up to everything uh, a comfort call if you will versus having just you know massive amount of communication always required because somebody has to be thinking that and you know it, it, it's you know you watch a little bit of film from last year you can see some guys that were just thinking all of a sudden knee, knees weren't bent body posture was straight up and down and that, that initially gave you that man there's a lot of thinking going on others trying to look around we, we we have to you know we're only as good as what they're able to execute and so uh, we, we, we got to find ways to to simplify but also have enough uh, because we're going to play some unbelievable opponents this next year I'm not going to. I'm not going to dive into that. But th just from talking to players, from talking uh, and watching, I, I think just the amount of the amount of communication that was required and or adjustments within calls. Um, you know, again, we, we need to come up. We need to have a call or two where it, we can get lined up and we can play ball and we can be. Reactive 
reactive versus having to be process oriented. You know, they, man, if you have a bunch of process oriented players out there, you're going to struggle to to make impact plays. Coach Riley described you as bringing a toughness to the staff. How do you, how do you teach the toughness? I, I don't I don't know if, if I have maybe the the recipe. I think it's just kind of how I go. Probably comes back to where I'm from and and and, and kind of you know Midwest roots. I'm a farm kid. Um, I'm not afraid. The, the secrets in the dirt. Um, you know the secrets in the work. And so I'm not afraid to to get my hands dirty. I'm not to, I'm not afraid to become become an assistant football coach and help this program. You know get to its standard again. But uh, I think just being detailed, being organized, holding myself to a high standard, uh, you, know, you become the sum of the people you surround yourself with, and hopefully the linebacking room will see that, and all of a sudden they, they start to emulate those things a little bit as well. The whole thing. Did you read about every dang name on the on the schedule? Man, you're making me nervous now standing up here. Um, you know, it's exciting, uh, really exciting. You just look non-con game right off the bat uh, in Las Vegas against you know LSU, and you know you, you go back to the previous just the last couple of years. You know, I think was it two years ago LSU Florida State unbelievable Labor Day game that ended with a field goal. You know, it just. That excitement right off the bat is, is going to be tremendous. Now, we have a long ways to go to, one, mentally and physically get ready for, for what we're walking into. Um, you know, and that's been one of the messages, though. I know our strength staff and our development people have really tried to communicate with our players is, you know, we're, we're, we're moving into a, a, a different phase and a different time for uh, USC football, and we need to be – both physically and mentally prepared for a week in, week out. You know, you're talking about a tremendous travel as well. I mean, we were playing at Maryland. All of a sudden, a five-hour flight, three-hour time change. You know, there's a lot of uniqueness to the schedule this year, uh, but it'll make it exciting as well. Matt, uh, how do you ensure on a staff like this, you know, with three guys with coordinator experience and Eric coming from the NFL, how, how do you ensure that there aren't too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, for kids <laughs> to use one specific term? I, 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 think, I think part of it is, is you know, I, I can only speak on my own, is, is staying humble. Um, you know, I'm, I'm here to help drive the vehicle, but I'm not in charge of it. Uh, I'll, I'll help any, I'll help, help Dan, Danton any way I can, give him ideas, give him thoughts, uh, come up with solutions. I think sometimes you know, we, we become a world of, of everyone has the answers, um, but very few people have solutions. And I like to think of myself as a solution person uh, because there's usually an action. There, there's a, you have to get involved to have solutions. And so uh, I have no problem doing that, finding ways to, to help us win games, uh, improve our product that's on the football field. But you know, I, I think it, it goes back to just being humble and knowing that we're all striving. If we're process driven, nobody's really worried about who's getting the, the oh, accolades or the, who's getting the publicity. Going back to where we started, was there a moment that really first got you started to think about making this transition or being open-minded to uh, making a bold move? There, there was probably. Um, I'm not going to get into names, but uh, uh, I'd interviewed for a for a FBS head job, and you know some of the, the feedback coming back was no FBS experience, and yeah. football's football. Uh, in my mind, uh, just the, the, the pieces I get to work with are bigger, faster, and stronger than a Division three coach. But there's still 11 guys on both sides of the ball, and you know we're, we're all still diagramming the same plays. It's just how they're the, the speed at which their execute is different. And so that was probably you know maybe the the, the last straw for me. Um, that you know if, if if I do see myself ascending in the in the profession. Do I need to take an opportunity? Do I need to take a chance on myself, like we talked about, and, and go to one of the blue bloods out there? And, and this, this presented itself. And it was, it was, you know, one of the things when when I did talk to to Coach Riley, he asked me, uh, he asked that same question: What is your vision? And 
you know, I probably, you, being transparent, so that coach, I want to sit in the seat like you do someday. And I think that probably took him back a little bit. I don't think many people, you know, answer questions like that. But I was just going to be brutally honest. That's, that's, that's. I want to be the best linebacker coach I can. But in the background, I want to be preparing for, to be another head football coach. If I can, I want to learn as much as I can. And you know, I think, I think any time, and, and Coach Riley would probably tell you the same thing. When I tried to put a staff together at NDSU, I always wanted to hire people that had vision of being a head football coach because they're going to be solution-based people. They're going to find answers, and they want to get it done before it gets to it gets to the head coach. And so I think that's where I can be a uh, be helpful is, is cutting off issues or any trouble that hey, have we thought about adjusting this before it becomes a bigger deal? I love my time at NDSU. I mean, it was 10 unbelievable years. Had opportunity to compete for seven national championships. I have a son that still plays there, and it, it'll it'll probably always be home to to my two boys. So, um, you know. That, that fan base there has unbelievable uh, standard, and, and that's what makes it, that place so great. Um, it, it's not about being seven and five. It's about winning championships. It's about winning national championships and doing it with the right people the right way. And, and I think this place can, can do the exact same thing. After you, you know, you've won championships and you've had so much success at, at North Dakota State, you hear someone say, you know, you're not good enough to be a head coach at the FBS level. Like, how did that make you feel just as a, as someone who's ah, it, been in this field? It is what it is. You know, just keep getting better. Ideally, how many years are you here? As long as Coach Riley's going to have me here. Uh, you know, I have a wife and a, and a dog that have seemed to uh, adjust to the <laughs> warmer weather and, and, and sun, the sunshine that's out every day versus uh, uh, the alternative. See you more. Did you have any reservations about Los Angeles? I, you know, I didn't. No, uh, I didn't. Uh, I'm not sure if that was good or bad, but you know, I, I saw it as USC, and you know, I'm going to work for for USC. I'm not going to work for Los Angeles, but uh, but it's been great. Um, you know, there is tremendous fan base right here. There's tremendous football uh, in this region, uh, in the state of California, dude. and you know, we we have to we have to continue to, to get the best players in the state to stay right here at USC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys have a great afternoon.